are still here on TV3's favorite morning show, New Day. And we're going to be talking about health, our health, your health, my health. But we're talking about endometriosis and we're going to hear a story of someone who has lived with it and what it means to have endometriosis. Then we'll come and talk about the scientific backing, the understanding what is endometriosis and how does it manifest. So let's see this and then we'll be right back to discuss this in studio. Will I make it through? Pain is slowly creeping So there's nothing I can do A body in a circle Ephesine has lived with this pain for 20 years. She goes through this unbearable pain each month, not knowing if she will survive it. The pain she goes through started at an early age of 8, but delay in taking her to the hospital for diagnosis worsened her situation. Herbal medicines became an option as she gulped them down monthly to ease her pain. Gradually, she was burying her womb and digging her grave without knowing. She got married and became pregnant for the first time but lost her pregnancy. It was until then that she realized that she was not just suffering from severe menstrual pain but had a condition called endometriosis. After losing seven pregnancies to this disease, she finally ended a seven-month term of carrying triplets who did not live. My last pregnancy was a miracle. I had seven, I had um, triplets and I delivered because uh, they were going to um, take them out about seven months. So I had two weeks to seven months and my water broke and I had still bed. So they were alive, but they all died one after the other. No one day, within the day, about seven days, 10 days interval, they died. If it says on daily basis, she's faced with the pain of being referred to as a barren woman, even after carrying three babies to term through IVF. She shares her struggles, discrimination from society and constant pain. Um, and even this still, people don't see you as a woman. Sometimes, I remember when I go back and My mom was trying to um, console me and talk to me, and there was a woman around, and she was like, "Say no, dear, and yet, say no, boy, and fan Carson, but don't assume you know every, you know somebody so well, so you can tell like, oh, on who you ain't to know." Even though she has undergone three surgeries, it has come at a cost, which has not in any way brought an end to her troubles. Today, Effie, through all the challenges, did not give up, but has started a campaign on social media to educate people on the dangers of endometriosis. When you have endo, you bloat. Sometimes you bloat. Sometimes my stomach looks like five months pregnant woman. You know, I remember when my husband was alive, sometimes people would be like, oh, congratulations. And I remember one time a friend of mine came to tell me that, oh, your friend says every day you are pregnant, but you, your baby never comes. We have to tell our story for you to know that, you know, you can't get it unless you have it. You know, so it's hard. I have been um, diagnosed with PTS, a whole lot of depression stuff. You know, sometimes I get frozen brain. Sometimes I don't even like myself. So when I hear somebody saying they don't like me, <laughs> I laugh because sometimes I don't like myself. It is estimated that the crippling disease affects 176 million women around the world. Doctors and researchers have still not been able to determine the causes. 
their cost is not known. There are a lot of things that we think contribute, but then we don't, there are no specific risk factors that we can say that if you avoid one, two, three, you will not get endometriosis, or if you do ABC, you will get endometriosis. The only thing we know is that sometimes it tends to run in families. And so if you have endometriosis, it is very likely that your sister will get it or that your daughter will get endometriosis. So it tells us that there may be some genetic component attached to it. But really, we, don't, we can't pinpoint and say that this is the definite cause. That when there is a hereditary link, the disease seems to be worse in the next generation. Reproductive techniques have improved generally, even in our country. So there are a lot of options available. Sometimes just by doing certain things or by the doctor giving certain drugs to just to increase the chances of a pregnancy, it works. When that doesn't work, there are options like IVF, which is even though expensive, but it's available in our country. Well, and so we went into the life of Effie Stern. Of course, you can't understand what she's going through because it's something she has to live with for 20 years and she's still battling it. But let's go and find out what exactly endometriosis is. And I'm joined by Skype with um, Dr. DSP, Dr. Faisal Yambila. Good morning, Faisal. Good morning, Anama. How are you doing? Oh, by God's grace, all is well. We thank Good morning to our cherished viewers. Great. Faisal, so let's start off by asking the simple question of what is endometriosis? Yes, Nanama, you see, in simple terms, you know, the body is very specific. We have specific eyes that make up the nose, the eyes. And so what happens is the cells that are supposed to be in the womb are found outside of the womb, let's say in the ovaries and other parts of the pelvis. So it's pretty much a condition of having human cells in a location where they are not wanted. Mm -hmm. And that causes a lot of pain for women. Hmm. And so typically, how would a woman present to the hospital? What would be her complaints apart from the pain? The interesting part is that one out of every eight women you see is living with endometriosis. As you could see from the video, the first thing is um, the complaint of having pelvic pain pain around the womb region that is made worse during the menstrual period. The pain can be severe enough for people to even skip um, school or skip going to work. It could be severe enough to land them in the hospital, causing them to vomit and have all sorts of other symptoms. So it's a very serious issue. Hmm. But and additionally, it also right. causes the, another bigger, the bigger problem of infertility, right. as we could see from the narrative she tried to get pregnant and she had lost pregnancies on seven different occasions. So that is the bigger problem of endometriosis. Right. And so, Pfizer, what are some of the risk factors? Because clearly from the same video, we understand that yeah. it's not been easy to find a cause. But there are some associated <laughs> risk factors. And also, does it run in families? Yes. You see, medical literature would say endometriosis is enigmatic mm -hmm. in the sense that with all the technology we have, we still are not able to tell why someone would have endometriosis. We don't know the specific cause. All we know is that it runs in families and it's also a theory that it could be as a result of your immune system fighting against you, all sorts of theories, but we can't pinpoint the specific cause of endometriosis. Mm -hmm. But we know it runs in families, mm. it does. So if you have a mother or a sister who has endometriosis, chances are you also have it as well. Right, and so typically the pain that we talk about, is it an yes. all cycle pain or does it have a particular predilection for a part in the menstrual cycle? And so that it will be easy for women to identify that if I have this kind of pain, then it is likely to be endometriosis as against any other pelvic problem. Yeah, and Anama, the sad part is that, of course, society generally is not sensitized about this condition. And so what we tend to see is around the age where women would have start having their menstrual cycle, they would have this pain that is constant. The pain is there all the time. You speak to school girls and they tell you that every single day I have to take painkillers because I'm feeling this pain in my lower abdominal region. It, is, it only becomes worse during the time of having your menstrual flow. Right. But essentially, it's a chronic type of pain. And that's very sad because it also affects your mind, mm. it affects your psychology, and it affects everyone around you. It's, it's a very dire situation. 
And so what are the treatment options or management options for someone who is diagnosed with endometriosis? Or maybe let me even ask, how do we diagnose endometriosis? Yes, yeah, so the diagnosis basically, of course, you start off with your symptoms. And um, because many people are not too sure about this particular disorder, they live, you know, how we live in societies, they think it's normal, everybody keeps you at home, you don't get to the hospital early enough. So there's a delay in diagnosis. Mm -hmm. But then the diagnosis is made by doing some ultrasound scan in the hospital, which many hospitals are able to do. And we do some lab investigations and we are able to actually see the tissue, the cells we are talking about that are located in abnormal regions. In terms of treatment, sadly, once again, we don't have a particular cure, but what we tend to do is to give some painkillers so imagine having a 15-year-old lady who is always on painkillers for every day of her life. We give painkillers, and we also give some medications that contain some hormones to try and deal with the pain situation. Hmm. But this is um, little to do um, with regards to such a big problem. Right. And sometimes if it's that serious, we could even resort to surgery, having surgery to take out the tissue that is located, let's say, outside of the, of the womb. Right. And yeah, so, so for the, to treat. Right. And so for those who have infertility resulting from endometriosis, what are some of the options yeah. that they have? Because in our parts of the world, as you may recall, it's very, yeah. I mean, when we talk about fertility, it's a very sensitive issue. And almost everyone who is married or goes into some relationship is expected to end that relationship with a successful, I mean, delivery. And so if for someone who has infertility as a primary problem resulting from endometriosis, what options do they have available? Well, that's, that's a big question. And of course, you mentioned in our setting, there are some options, of course. There is the option of assisted, um, you know, reproductive technology, which of course is very expensive. And the average Ghanaian woman would not be able to easily afford. Um, you know, of course, the fancy terminology we have, in vitro fertilization, all of that is, is, is available. But then that brings to mind the social ramifications of the problem, because Many people would only know they have endometriosis because of the fertility aspects of it. Mm. And so once again, it's available. But last time we checked it, it cost in excess of 10,000 US dollars mm -hmm. for a procedure of such, um, of such caliber. Mm -hmm. And from the sad narrative, she's done it so many times and it hasn't even um, materialized. But mm -hmm. the good news is many women, many women, over 70% of the women with endometriosis would be able to carry a child by, um, you know, the, the blessing of having technology with us. Hmm. And so finally, as we wrap up, what will be your word yes. out there to young girls or people, women who are dealing with endometriosis and also to the Ghanaian people? Because, you know, we live in a society where many women have to battle these issues unknowingly and they're dealing exactly. with infertility or pain and people just think they're being lazy or they're just making excuses. <laughs> yes. Well, you know, it starts off with sensitization. Hmm at least now on your highly esteemed platform, we are able to talk about these issues. It does exist. And just because a woman is unable to do anything during her menses does not mean she's feigning illness or she's mm. um, unwell. She could really have a valid medical problem. Mm. And of course, um, that is on a personal level, but society must, we, we must be sensitized to know that one out of every eight women we see is living with this silent um, problem, causing mm. a lot of, um, issues for her life and so society should be sensitized to accept these um, aspects of medical gynecological problems and secondly we should be able to seek early medical treatment and there is a lot of hope hmm. we should be able to have support groups for women who have to go through this difficulty on a daily basis but the good news is there is a lot of hope with regards to the fertility aspects and of course um, we would keep doing the research and we hmm. hope in the near future, we'd have some better answers to these questions. We certainly hope in the near future we will have those answers. With you being the pioneer leading that <laughs> frontier, certainly we will make sure that happens in our lifetime. I'd like to say thank you to you, DSP Dr. Faisal Ayam Billah. He is a senior medical officer and he joined us to discuss this very important topic of endometriosis.